Hello everyone, my name is Isimopoulos Pilios from the Institute of Biomedical Technology in Greece and I'm really glad uh, to be participating in this year's ICNBME conference. So today I'm going to present you a project that we undertook uh, regarding the implementation of a medical equipment inventory at a regional healthcare system in Greece, and namely the second regional healthcare authority of Piraeus and the Aegean Sea. Now, instead of giving you a strict definition, I would prefer to give you an example case in order to realize the importance of a proper medical device inventory. So, going back a couple of years, we can now definitely say that the pandemic uh, took us by surprise. And uh, in the first few crucial weeks, the only uh, means of prevention that we had available before the development of vaccines and drugs were the medical devices. So uh, we solely depended on them in the first weeks in order to treat uh, the pandemic, in order to limit the disease spreading, in order to earn us some time uh, to help us uh, plan our next steps. Here we can see some examples of medical devices that were mainly used to diagnose or treat the COVID-19 disease. And this includes some consumables like masks, needles and gloves, but also uh, higher cost or higher technology devices like uh, intensive care unit ventilators, non-invasive ventilators, in vitro diagnostics, uh, physiological monitoring systems, pulse oximeters, etc. Okay, so now that we saw the importance of the medical devices in our fight against the pandemic, uh, the question that one might well ask is, okay, we know that the medical devices are important. Now, help me find them. How do I locate them? And this question uh, mainly highlights the electrical uh, devices, which are uh, more costly and uh, much more limited compared to the consumables like masks that uh, were in shortage for a shorter period of time. So, how do I find uh, the ventilator that is missing and is needed in one intensive care unit uh, that might exist somewhere else uh, and be out of use? And the answer to this question, unfortunately, is quite simple, and it is that you don't. And you don't because uh, there is no national medical device inventory existing in Greece, except for some high, very high capital cost equipment like MRIs or CTs. And OK, you may say that uh, that was an extreme case that we highlighted here uh, regarding the pandemic, but uh, the existence or in our case, the non-existence of uh, medical device inventory uh, may very well hinder uh, the effectiveness, the cost effectiveness, the overall functioning, and uh, lastly, the patient safety in a regional healthcare or even a national healthcare uh, level. And for these reasons, uh, the second regional healthcare authority uh, took the initiative and asked us to create uh, a full uh, medical electrical medical equipment inventory. And as you can see here, uh, the whole uh, RHA consists of 85 health centers and autonomous multi-purpose regional medical units and uh, dozens more of uh, local healthcare units. Uh, that all this span across uh, the Aegean Sea, uh, the Piraeus, and the West Athens sector. And now, uh, even though uh, that to many of you these health centers' names may sound uh, enjoyable, uh, because maybe they remind you of your last vacation in Greece, to us uh, these uh, special geographic characteristics were a challenge. And for this reason, uh, a working group of nine experienced biomedical engineers had to be created and a straightforward and well-defined protocol was developed regarding the registration procedure. After that, 
this whole region was uh, divided into sectors and each biomedical engineer visited uh, every sector uh, where uh, island by island, uh, municipality by municipality, uh, health center by health center, and finally room by room, they, record, they registered uh, every uh, electrical medical device. So now I would like to uh, briefly describe you the registration procedure that we followed for each device, starting, of course, with the locating of the equipment to be registered. After that, uh, we attached a special indelible in with QR code label bearing a unique uh, code for each, on each device. And then we had to locate the manufacturer's uh, marking label. After that, uh, we took at least three pictures, three photos of each device, one of the Inbit uh, QR marking label, one of the uh, manufacturer's marking label, and the last one of the full view of the device. And this data uh, would uh, next be uh, inputted on the Web Praxis Medical Equipment Management System. Also keep in mind that uh, this whole procedure was specially designed to minimize time consumed in patient areas, patient discomfort and uh, distraction of medical, nursing or administrative staff. And for this reason, uh, a special uh, app was developed, uh, ta uh, tailor suited to the needs of uh, this registration procedure. And now having followed uh, the procedure uh, described previously for each device, we were able to obtain the following information for each uh, device. And this information includes, of course, the unique device code on the QR label, the manufacturer of the device, the model, uh, its serial number and medical device group, the room of installation, uh, its date of manufacture, and sometimes we would uh, be able to indirectly obtain information like uh, the acquisition method if it's a purchase, donation, uh, the date of acquisition, and the operational status. And this information would be obtained mainly uh, with the help of the local staff. At this point, it was also clarified to the local staff who would uh, be called to repeat uh, this uh, registration procedure in the future by themselves, uh, the types of equipment to be registered, and that includes uh, electrical medical devices that are most likely to be in need of repairs or periodic uh, maintenance uh, in the future, like defibrillators, suction pumps, or X-ray imaging systems, and the equipment to be excluded are capital equipment, uh, small battery powered devices or consumables. And then the last step of the registration procedure as we saw earlier uh, was the data entry on the Web Praxis Medical Equipment Management System. And although uh, this uh, integration is not uh, a prerequisite for the existence of an inventory, uh, it is the only way to unlock its full potential. And speaking of data entry, uh, one of its most uh, challenging and time-consuming parts was that of uh, the categorizing of the devices into medical device groups. For this reason, we used uh, the GMGN uh, nomenclature system with some examples shown here on the left. And uh, although it can be a very tedious uh, procedure uh, due to the fact mostly because it is not a straightforward decision uh, to which uh, group you have to appoint each device due to lack of information most of the times, uh, it is very important if we, have, if we want to speak a common language when discussing about uh, the devices and in order to uh, create some technical specifications and prepare for future procurements. One of the final challenges that we had to face was how to ensure that uh, the inventory and the whole system would be kept alive. And this is a challenge because uh, this includes uh, many different users with different backgrounds from different geographical locations. Uh, it is known that uh, various 
uh, approaches from the year 2000 and so on have failed uh, mainly because uh, the inventories went out of date. So in order to overcome such a setback, we implemented a complete, a full user training program in various uh, phases. The first phase was uh, during the live demonstration during uh, the on-site visits where the local staff was uh, given um, most of the procedures that had to be followed for the inventory process. Then a series of training and technical support webinars were held for both uh, the decentralized users in each uh, health center as well as the centralized technical authorities. Also a special education web practice website was created with a portion of the uh, real complete registered data. And finally, uh, an asynchronous education platform was used uh, with a tutorial course covering uh, most of all uh, the full web practice procedures. Now, the results of the registration was that 85 health units were uh, registered, the creation of an electronic inventory was uh, performed, these data were fed to uh, MMs and access was given to all hospitals and health centers. And some numbers showed that uh, over 4,500 devices were registered of about 640 manufacturers uh, belonging to 1,600 models and over categorized over uh, 280 medical device groups. But most importantly, if we go back to the question on the example at the start of this uh, presentation, it is now that not only we know how many devices of, how, of which uh, medical device group there exist, but we also know their exact position. And this is maybe a less simple but more fulfilling answer to the question that we uh, imposed on the start. And aside from that, a collection of over 1,700 photos of the existing equipment was created, uh, with each set of photos as the one shown here uh, being linked with uh, its corresponding device and making uh, its identification uh, easier in the future. And finally, some uh, interesting statistics regarding the operational status of the devices were obtained. And as you can see here, a very big portion of the equipment, about uh, one quarter of it, it's not being used. Uh, it's out of use for many reasons. Either it's out of order or it is stored or it is waiting to be withdrawn. Moreover, uh, here on the right, you can see uh, the distribution of the number of medical devices on each health center. And this uh, well depicts the inhomogeneity of uh, the situation in the second uh, regional health care authority uh, due to the different needs and population coverage of each uh, health center in this on by the very variable number of devices here. But most interestingly, there are many cases highlighted here where uh, a very big ratio of their equipment uh, is out of use. And now that this is known, uh, it is easy to perform a redistribution of uh, this equipment to uh, other health centers where it's needed. And as a last note here, uh, the medical inventory is but a small part of a medical device, MEMS, like the web praxis, uh, which has modules facilitating for report repairs or device maintenance procedures with uh, easy and straightforward uh, procedures and actions that facilitate the everyday routine of the staff and help them, of course, uh, focus on the most important part of your job, which is uh, the patient. 
all in all, we can say that uh, correct and updated inventory uh, is the basis for the proper management of medical equipment. Because as we saw earlier, first of all, we can have a clear and immediate view of the equipment. Then having this knowledge, we can perform a strategic planning of future purchases or donations and only acquire what is truly needed. Then having existing trustworthy data, we can perform uh, evidence-based management uh, regarding the needs uh, of the equipment redistribution uh, inside the region. Uh, of course, taking into consideration the equipment condition, number, cost of use, and overall perform a requirement analysis. And last but not least, uh, the vigilance is an important part and it can be uh, developed only with a proper inventory that allows us to immediately detect uh, faulty equipment and proper uh, report an adverse uh, event that may occur. So uh, thank you very much for your attention in this project that constitutes a pilot application of best practice in medical equipment inventory in Greece. And uh, we believe it will help improve very many performance indices uh, of the medical equipment uh, in use. And we hope that uh, could be an example for the implementation of such uh, systems throughout the country in the future. Again, thank you very much.